today we're going to uh, uh, machine the little pegs for my cross member mounts um, but first I just got to cut two more bits because I kind of messed up on the last ones so um, here's one um, it's pretty tough stuff to cut um, some of you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm a Surrey's 2008 Karate Chop Champion. This is my starlet, I haven't really talked to you about it properly yet, so it looks pretty sorry for itself at the moment. I've owned the car for about 10 years, give or take, and I first built it car at my old flat out of a rented garage, chucked a power lead down. And it was all Mark II Escort running gear. So I had an English axle. I had a Techno Toy Tuning four link mounts. Uh, so it was all adjustable. I welded a panard rod on. Uh, I'd sunk a, an alley tank in the boot. Had a roll cage. Um, Mark II Escort front cross member. 13 inch tarmac spec, like gas legs all adjustable TCAs and things like that and it was a 2 litre Pinto on 48s 171 horsepower <clears throat> it, was a, it was a good little car, good fun but it just started getting a bit too tatty and also I was a student at the time when I was when I was making it so I didn't really have too much money so everything was on a budget um, but nothing's changed because now I've got a house and I rent this unit to do all my work and it's <laughs> sort of in the same boat but I'm going to give it a go and um, I'll insert some pictures and clips of what the starlet does, or used to do. So yeah, so you can see it used to uh, do a good little burnout and some skids and stuff. Uh, she was really good around the track and that's what I mostly enjoy doing is track days. Um, I've done a lot of karting since I was about 12, uh, brother used to race. So I was always hanging around race tracks. Basically now I'm sort of in a position to start building this again, uh, off we go and like I said money is a bit of an issue um, and I don't really... I don't really think you need to spend mega money to make a capable car. I'm not after mega, mega power. I'm trying to use a bit of um, ingenuity, I suppose that's the right word, to get a capable car. When I picked up my compact, I'd never worked on a BM before, and I just, I thought the running gear on it was pretty good. That's why I'm deciding to put the BMW cross member in. So the first, first issue is, here mounting the cross member and uh, I've made a little diagram I'll show you what I mean right here's me a uh, little diagram I'm not very good at drawing so the problem is the cross member itself where the bolt holes are are directly pr pretty much center of this lip on the chassis rail so to overcome that this is why I'm making those boxes I can then notch out my chassis rail where it needs to go weld in the boxes and then put some gussets and stuff in to keep it keep it strong can't really think of another way around it um seems seems doable so uh let's get into it right so in the previous video i explained what i started making um so today i'm going to machine machine my little slugs out so firstly um because i don't know the height they're going to need to be so I just need to face off one end, bore a hole, I need a 12.5 mil hole uh, for an M14 thread. And then I've got to work on the cone, cone shape, and I've worked out that I don't actually need to weld a bit of tube on to slot over the part. I can bore it out to 25.5 mil. So firstly, I need to find a drill bit.
This is a 12.5. As you can see, I keep all my random drills very organised. I do have a few little sets of sets of you know 1.5 to 8s and that, but it gets me by. So my trusty old Boxford. Do all my little machining work on. I picked this up years ago for 600 quid, um, and. It has been a lifesaver. Again, luxury tool. Um, if you're into building cars, I recommend getting one. They, uh, they're worth their weight in gold. First, I've got to face it off so it's nice and square. Center drill bit. And then I'm gonna work my way up uh, a range of drills until I get to 12.5. There we go. So oh, yeah, just uh, three more to do. I don't know what uh, I don't know what happened on that last one. Maybe I just overheated the drill bit. Let me see that. Uh, let's go sort this out, I suppose. done with them um, but they've got this not nasty little bit on the back so I'm gonna use this one inch drill bit I picked up from a local second-hand tool shop runs on a Morse tape as so it goes straight in the end of the lathe I'm just gonna basically knock off these bits so I don't cut my hands right so we're just back in the garage I'm making the next part I need to make the tools to make the cone um, and what I've actually discovered is that my 130 degree angle last time I mentioned it is incorrect. That there is 45 degrees. Um, might not be able to see it on there. So basically that's a 90 degree cone. I can't remember how you work it out probably, but yeah, so what I need to do is I'm gonna, so I'm slightly cheating. This big one inch drill bit, I'm gonna grind at like a 90 degree um, so then I can bore out most of the material with this and then I'm going to grind a 45 degree um, form tool on here and then I can just plunge and get, it, get the last cut nice and accurate with this bit so let's get making them.
and uh, last tour I've got to make. So this piece of high speed steel, someone had already sort of semi cut for me as a boring bar, so it can go in and not catch. I'm just going to fine tune it uh, for what I need to do. Right, so I've got the drill bit in ready. I've got my form tool set up perpendicular to the material. First I'm going to drill most of the material out with the drill bit and then finish it off with the form tool. Right, so most of the material's gone. There's quite a lot of chatter on that so it's not very nice in there so let's Finish it off with the form tool. There you go. Okay, next step. Uh, set the boring bar up perpendicular. Uh, again, I'm going to remove most of the material with a big drill bit and then square it all off with this. Right, so one done. All bored out. Nice little step. 25.4 mil. Yep, it's an inch basically. Oh, that is an inch. Uh, right, one more to do and then um, get welding them in. Here's my little things cone and a step. They go in here. Um, and I've got two spacers so the box is level. Um, and as you can see, it fits all nice. I'm just going to weld around there and I'm going to leave this one stepped up because I want the maximum, they're all the same size and I want the maximum amount of threads so I'm going to leave that one proud and weld obviously weld the joint and then just weld this one flush but first I've got to tap, tap them Right, so before I start welding, I'm going to use my TIG welder um, and anything you TIG weld has got to be clean. So I've scrubbed it with brake cleaner and then with acetone. So I'm going to set it up, use these spacers um, and tack it together. Okay, so all set up with the spacers, uh, TIG welder DC, the thickness of the box section is 3mm and like a rule of thumb I work to is uh, one amp per thou there's about 40 thou in a mil so I need 120 amps something's wrong with my mask I've just had to bodge it with a piece of a uh, number 11 glass I'd line about this thing's uh, seen better days anyway, but... one side done I uh, am not the best TIG welder this side went better this side went better than this side kind of got a bit of undercut which isn't great but she should hold a good one right, let me um, button up the other one and see how they fit final product all done. Moment of truth. If it's good. That one fits good. 
Same? Yep. Boom. Perfect. Cool. So, yeah. Stage one complete. All I've got to do now is um, work out the suspension geometry, which will be the next video. But, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope it wasn't too tedious. Uh, but, yeah. Can't wait for the next one.